Hey everybody, welcome back to Champion Sons and our Madden 22 franchise as Season 2 is going to be getting underway here with the Atlanta Falcons. Now last season we made it into the playoffs, really we're shooting for 7 wins, but we finished the year on a good 5 game win streak, finished up 10-7, and seven, got into the playoffs, actually got past the Eagles in the wild card round. Um, just could not get anything beyond that. We did fail in Chicago uh, in the divisional round. But new team, uh, made some offseason moves, so new year. And overall, I think some of the guys that we got in, especially on defense, you're looking at one of them right now, Austin Battles, has kind of got this little development stuff going on. Um, he is a pretty outstanding linebacker that we picked up in the draft. He's not our number one pick. Our first pick, um, as y'all saw, you know, Caleb Jarrett. Um, you'll definitely see him. He is going to be starting immediately. So that is going to be a little bit of a strain for us having a rookie. Um, but, you know, we brought him in for a reason. We had to trade Matt Ryan for cap space. It is what it is at this point. Um, so we are moving on. Now, part of this game plan going forward is going to be, um, you know, I think offense is going to be our focus. Defensive-wise, I, I would like to think we should be fine, at least as far as the secondary goes. Um, we kept a lot of our good speed that we had. Um, on the defensive line, we lost Grady Jarrett, which is a big loss. However, I think we made up for it with some of the guys that we do already have there. Um, and, that you know, our front seven's not going to take that big of a hit. We'll we'll kind of see. And getting pressure in this game coming up here um, against the Panthers is going to be key. So we'll see how our defense looks um, and kind of what we got going on and how our rookies step up. And our rookies on defense are going to have an opportunity early as Carolina will take possession of the ball to start the game. And we find them here at the Falcon about 43-yard line. And they are driving. They're going to hand it a little bit of play action. We get back there to Yachty Mariner. He's not one of our rookies, but, man, he is a veteran presence that I think can play a big role this season. He was overshadowed last year by Grady Jarrett being on the uh, line with him. But this year I think he can make a name for himself and getting it started early with the early sack of Sam Darnold here in this uh, divisional matchup to start the season. That's a big-time play. Uh, from our defensive line. And you got to love seeing that. Defense was going to be kind of the question coming in. Um, looks like they're responding so far. Now, granted, it's the first drive of the season, but a strong start is, is always a positive thing to see. And this is going to be a strong start for our fan base, causing an off false start penalty to happen. We didn't get too many of those last year um, to go uh, to help us out. With the other team getting a false start. Didn't get too many of them. We did false start quite a bit. Not the CPU though. So maybe this season is shaping out to be a little bit more equal. Now at the second and 24, Panthers are going to come to set five wide. We bring a little bit of pressure, but they find a man in the zone. And who's that going to be? Anderson? Did that, was that who they found over there on the left side? Who's just settled down right in the zone. No, that's Moore. Um, DJ Moore over there settling down. Getting the big time play, making it from third or second and 22 to third and seven. And Darnold getting the snap. Now we get some pressure early, but not enough. And he still throws it. And they make a diving attempt at that catch. And they're going to say he was out of bounds. Whew, okay. Falls incomplete. I'll take that. Um, big time play. Our defense bent a little bit, but did not break. And here they are forcing a field goal. From about the, that should be about a 57 yarder. And they're going to push that one to the right. No good. This one is no good. And we are still tied here in this prime time start to the season on a Monday night football. As they miss that about 57, 58 yard field goal um, to the right. And so this is going to be our time. We got good field position. Right. So we take it over at the Panther 47 or at our own 47 yard line. Just over half the field to go to score and to give us the lead. Now Jarrett's first play as he hands it off to Mike Davis on the left side. Finds a big hole. Breaking tackles. And is finally brought down just about the 26-yard line. 
Mike Davis, great run there off to the left side. Beautiful hole opening up with that line just moving the uh, defenders around. And he gets through easily untouched down the field before he's finally brought down um, at around the 26. Great run. And, you know, for a rookie quarterback, not too shabby to be, to be your first play under center, you know. Could have fumbled it. Is there anything worse could have happened? Uh, but, hey, he did not... We did not turn it over. We got down the field. That's what you like to see. Now, Jarrett's going to get set up in the shotgun formation. We do have three wide. Now, in free agency, we have brought in a couple of receivers. Tajay Sharp had the ball, and he fumbled. Oh, no, this is not looking good. Jarrett finally brings him down. Okay, Caleb Jarrett brings, it, brings down the defender. Tajay Sharp, can't believe he fumbled. And that's going to lead to a touchdown by the Panthers. So we will have possession of the ball. As I was saying, we did bring in Kiki QT um, from free agency. And Mike Davis, he's not from a free agency. He makes a cut in down the sideline. Mike Davis once again to the 26-yard line. He just likes getting stopped right there as he makes a big rush up the middle down to the right side of the field all the way to the 26-yard line. Gotta love seeing him. Follow his blockers right there, making the cut, getting outside, and then the rest of that is just speed, as he totaled about 60 yards on that run. So great start to this drive for this Falcons offense. Um, but we have brought in Kiki QT as one of our receivers. Um, we did it, as y'all know, we got rid of Calvin Ridley um, to want cap space, get draft picks, all that type of good stuff. And so we do have to bring in some guys to help kind of fill in those gaps till we get these uh, some rookies kind of drafted and built up. Now, second and six here, trailing by seven. Jarrett is going to be in the shotgun formation, five wide, so he's alone in the backfield. And he has the snap, scans over the middle, fires it. Kyle Pitts down to the five-yard line. Jarrett almost getting that first touchdown of his career in this one. But Kyle Pitts will get stopped at the five. But that does bring up first and goal here. Just over two minutes remaining in the first quarter, trying to get this game tied up. The Falcons' offense is on the move. And you got to love seeing Kalem Jarrett stand in the pocket on that, take the hit, but deliver the ball on time and on point. So first and goal from the five. Jarrett is going to be under center. The Falcons do have two tight ends to the right side. Pitts and Jesse James in there. Now Jared drops back, gets good blocking, and throws it, and that's deflected over the middle. He looks like he was going for the slant pattern, trying to hit Gage, but man, Carolina jumped that one and was able to knock it down. Luckily, it did not get intercepted, um, so we do maintain possession, but it does bring up second and goal now from the five trying to find a way to get into the end zone. Jarrett is going to be in shotgun formation. Two tight ends to the right side of the line. Mike Davis in the backfield. Kyle Pitts is in motion, coming across the formation. As we get the snap, handed off. Mike Davis to the left, bounces off a man, and is finally brought down at the three-yard line. He got kind of stood up a little bit early. was still able to make a little bit of a move um, and get a couple yards out of that. So now third and goal from the three. Jared in the shotgun formation, four wide. Fires it. It's caught for a touchdown, Kyle Pitts. Touchdown, Falcons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Touchdown number one on the career for Kalem Jarrett. What a throw, Kyle Pitts. You know, two youngsters playing out there together. That is a good offense to see moving down the field. Way to deliver that one on point. Led Pitts on the out route, gave him the space he needed, and he makes the catch, and that one did tie it up. Now here we are a little bit later in the second quarter now, about six minutes to go. And you can see we are trailing by four at this point. The score is 14 to 10. Carolina is leading here under six minutes. Um, but Jarrett trying to make a comeback. We've been kind of back and forth a little bit over here. Um, since the last drive to tie the game up at seven. And so here we are trying to make our move, and you like to see Jarrett do things like he just did, standing in the middle of the pocket and delivering a good ball on that crossing pattern, which sometimes can be some of the harder routes to hit. Now first and ten for the Falcons at the Panther 26-yard line, trying to um, get a score to take the lead. Jarrett drops it over the middle to 
Kiki QT breaks a couple tackles. QT down to the 14-yard line. Gain of 12 on that one. Big time play by Kiki coming over the middle, breaking the first tackles and still getting the extra yards. So first and 10 at the 14, Mike Davis in the backfield. As they hand it off to the left side, Davis up the, cuts it up, still going. Mike Davis brought down at the four yard line, just shy of 10 yards. And that's gonna bring up a second and inches. But look at that, Chris Lindstrom for the Falcons. Our starting guard is down, that is not good. I need to see, hopefully he won't be out for too long. Now on second and inches, the Falcons are gonna go five wide. Jarrett is alone in the backfield. As he's going to get the snap, scans over the field, finds a hole, runs for it. Touchdown, Falcons! Caleb Jarrett does it on the feet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Caleb Jarrett, first rushing touchdown of his career. What a night for this young kid as the Falcons have taken the lead as he picks up his first rushing touchdown of his career. And following that up, uh, that followed his first passing touchdown of his career as well. Great play by that young man. It's good to see him playing good, solid, smart football. Now here we are, two minutes here into the second quarter with our defense on the field, trying to make something happen, and we go for the pass, and we miss the tackle. You've got to be kidding me. The play was missed altogether. D. Moore escapes down the left sideline for a touchdown. Now. Here we are into the third quarter, and the score is 21-20. to 20. The Panthers are leading us. Um, we did get one extra little field goal there, so nothing great to show. And this, this is really where the game kind of kicks off for us as we are here in the second half, um, trailing only by one. And we have the Panthers deep in their own territory right now. They are at the eight-yard line as we do have it at a second and nine. And this Panther offense coming out in the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers with the tight end there. It looks like in a slot formation. As they drop back, Darnold holds it over the middle. Fires it to his man. He gets away from Terrell. No, you've got to be kidding me. Down the sideline, Anderson is going to take it 92 yards to the house. You've got to be kidding me. We went for the interception, and they took it to the house. Um, and that really would be the last score uh, worth kind of showing. They did run away with it. It just became big play after big play like you just saw. And I mean 60-yard pass play, 60-yard run. That seemed like nothing we could ever do would be any effective at all. We just forgot how to tackle, basically, and forgot how to cover. So they did blow us out week one of the season at home on Monday Night Football, 49-30. to that is a pretty piss poor showing by our guys. Um, so coming up here into game number two, we are going to have to definitely play better. Now, Caleb Jarrett, the first half played well. Second half started the turnover train. Um, that's what led to a lot of those scores. You know, 21, it being 21 to 20, our defense faltering like they did on just allowing big play after big play. And then having turnovers mixed in with that, it just destroyed us and, was it was an embarrassment to see really uh, so we did lose the first game handily by 19 points three scores uh 49 to 30 so coming back week two now we are going to be on the road in cincinnati um getting ready to try and bounce back uh, from we the loss of week one but first, we need to take a look at our scouts. What do we have working, and what do we got kind of going on um, here as a regional basis, and kind of what should we really be looking for? Now, quarterback is obviously going to be one of the highlights of every draft class. That's kind of what it, uh, it's like the prize pig, if you will. You know, everybody goes to see that competition happen. Um, but I think we're going to have to look other places for – our needs outside linebacker. Um, and I think defensive back really are going to be the main ones, um, that we have to look at. Yeah. You know, our front seven with Mariner tied in there. I think we're pretty good on that end. Um, but outside of that, it's, you know, on the outside edges for our linebackers, we definitely are going to need some 
help with how we're transitioning this defense to be able to cover some of those flats and running backs, some faster guys, um, all that. Now, what you may be seeing me do is I'm working my way down the list um, for uh, just to mark the favorites. And really, I do it just to kind of keep an eye on these guys. You know, normally I go position by position. If you're in, if you're be if you're undrafted or day three, I don't really worry about you at that stage because um, you won't really be viewed too much during the draft. So these other guys are the ones that, you know, come around five. You need to know a little something about. So you want to put them on just so you have that kind of notice of them. Hey, let me take a look at these guys. Um, need to have a little something. So you can make at least a semi-educated decision on who's going to be that guard you pick up in the sixth round, right? So that's kind of what we're just doing here, marking these guys as a favorite. Just to keep in mind on uh, every position, who's still available as a draft comes. Um, Will we heavily scout all these guys? No. But as we see, once the draft does get here and it's happening, we get to those later rounds, it's easier just to check your favorites. Whoever you have left, obviously, is someone who is projected to be prior a non-six-round pick for the most part, um, sixth and seventh. Any of these favorites are left? Well, now you're looking at potential. Uh, pick up a good guy for late and for cheap, basically. So. That's kind of what we're doing as we mark our way through here before we get into this game um, on the road against Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, they are 1-0 versus our 0-1. We had a horrific start last week. We definitely do need to turn that around um, this week. So it's... It's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens. We have a rookie quarterback. We need the team to continue to play well. Um, where we just got to see where do we need to make some changes and and adjustments um, as far as our team goes. And kind of what we do from this point on. But starting out, we are going to have the ball here to start this game, um, and we have a second and seven right now at the Cincinnati 35-yard line, trying to get an opening score. Get the opening score, get the lead, and work your game from that angle. So second and seven, Jarrett drops back, rolls out to his right side, stands in, fires it deep down the field, and that's going to be poorly thrown to Kyle Pitts. Not sure why he threw it like that, kind of left that one hanging. Caleb Jarrett, the number two pick in this year's draft uh, for our first round, our first pick of the first round. He, yeah, I think he's going to pay off in the long run really well. You know, we'll just have to wait and see, but I do think he is going to. Now in this set third and seven, eh, not the greatest throw in the world, so I say he's going to hang around but not making throws like that. Um, he does make a kind of a piss-poor throw, which gets deflected. So it does still leave us with a chance to get a field goal. So we've got that working for us. Now if we can just knock that one through, and it looks like that should be good, and it is. That is going to be the first lead that we've had uh Pretty much of the season so yeah way to go kudos to us so now here we are a little bit later in the first uh, quarter on this really the second drive of the game the Bengals were able to add a field goal as well and we're going to be at about the Bengals 40 yard line after that rushing play gets stopped for a loss of one and then we do have a second and 11 here trying to keep this ball moving and keep momentum kind of going in our way we come out in the shotgun formation four wide a little bit of run up the middle. Now they bounce it out to the left side. Hawkins stiff arms a man and finally gets brought down at the about the 30-yard line. Looks like a gain of about 10 yards on that one. Hawkins with the great run off to the left side and then that stiff arm there at the end. Um, gave him that extra little burst to get that yard or so. Great run by him. Got to love seeing that out of your offense. Now third and one, Mike Davis to the left side. Big hole as he get, picks up about eight yards. Seven, eight yards all the way down to the 23, and that's going to bring up a first and 10 for this Falcons offense. As we come set in a shotgun formation, three receivers to the left side. Pitts is in the slot on the right. Jarrett has the snap, scans over, fires it to Kyle Pitts, and that's going to be caught, and he's brought down relatively quickly at the 15-yard line. Right around the left side of the numbers, as that brings up second and two. Now getting to the line, hurry. Is Jared in a shotgun formation, gets a snap, 
Bengals bring a blitz. He finds Sharp going to the end zone, and he's met at the goal line and has stood up and stopped two yards short. Tajay Sharp just could not force his way through as we were able to find him coming on that little drag pattern across the field, and he aimed for that corner, just could not get the final little push, and so he has stopped. As we have first and goal from the two-yard line coming out in the shotgun formation, two tight ends to the right side. We send Kyle Pitts in motion. Jarrett gets the snap, hands it off to Davis up the middle. Mike Davis stood up at the one-yard line, right up the gut, and the defensive line holds as that brings up second and goal at the one-yard line. And this is going to be a big-time play. As we come in a power formation, two tight ends to the right side. Jarrett is going to be under center. We have Rain in at fullback. Mike Davis in the backfield. Or Hawkins. Run a play action. And they don't bite. And they're going to bring us down for the sack. Oh, no. Caleb Jarrett on the play action. And the defenders just did not bite. And if you look, there were two of them there. So one of them was going to make the tackle. Even if one did bite, the other was going to have a free shot at us. And that's going to bring up third and goal now at the nine-yard line. We come out for this in a shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right. Jarrett has a snap. Fires it to the left side. He's got Gage Jr. Touchdown, Falcons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Jarrett to Gage. What a combo that was on that play. Found him in the open space and gave him what he needed to make that catch. Easy in the end zone as we will take the lead 10-3 to in this one. Now, here we are a little bit later in the second quarter now as the Bengals are on the move trying to uh, get this game tied up. But not by with our defense has anything to say about it as we bust on through there to get the sack. Big time play by this defensive line. Davison moving his man out of the way and finally getting to Burrow to bring him down at about the 33-yard line. you got to love seeing that from this, uh, from this defensive line group. So second and 19, that was actually about the 35. I'm sorry, I said the 33. No, they are actually put placed at the 35-yard line. And Burrow's going to be under center for the second and 19 as they get called to the line. And they are set, they get the snap. Toss to the left side. And Mixon's got some space. Stiff arms, the man is finally going to be brought down as uh, Freddie O kept following him there. He got stiff arm to push away, but he maintained with it, and Agent O finally does help bring him down for a third and 15. Now Burrow's in a shotgun formation, three wide, as they get the snap off. We get a little pressure up the middle, but he drops it off for Mixon, who's going to get hit hard by Deion Jones and is brought down short of the line to gain as he is brought down at the 19. That makes it fourth and three at the 19-yard line, and the Bengals are going to go for it. Burrow is under center. Three wide receivers set. One tight end to the right side of the line. Mixon in the backfield. They get the snap. We bring the pressure. They fire it over the middle. It's going to be caught. And, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Not only did they catch the ball, we're going to give them half the distance to the goal as we get a personal foul face mask on that tackle. Agent O. Ah, man, going too quickly there. And that will actually move the ball down to the six-yard line as Cincinnati is trying to get this tied up. Two tight ends to the left side. Burrow is under center. Handed off to Mixon up on the left side. Breaks a tackle, but is brought down quickly there after at the three-yard line. Second and goal now. Nine feet away from tying this game up. As the Bengals will come to the line. Two tight ends to the right side. One tight end to the left. Power formation. Mixon in the backfield. Up the middle. Mixon's going to power his way through. Deion Jones did hit him, but it didn't have any any effect on them as they are brought down in the end zone and that game would be tied up then now a little bit later here we are at the start of the third quarter the score is 17 to 13 um so we are still seeing the same kind of trend happening touchdowns and field goals but this is at the start of the third quarter we're gonna chase joe burrow down Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. davison got off the ball and Joe Burrow rolls out to his right and just has nowhere to go with it. And Davison, not known for his speed, chases him down. And we are going to get the sack. Got to love seeing that from that young man. The big time play by this defense who is stepping up in this one. Holding the Beagles to 13 points in the first half. Now getting that big stop. Got to love seeing it. 
So second and 22 here at the four-yard line. Burrow is going to be under center as we do kind of stack the box there. Two tight ends, one on each side for Cincinnati. As Burrow drops back, throws it quickly to the left side, and that's going to be caught, and he's brought down. It looks like Devontae Adams now playing for the Bengals. Uh, makes that catch as that was going to be his, that is his second catch of the day. So third and 18 for this Bengals offense, trailing by four here at the start of the first, or the start of the second half. Trying to, you know, really at this stage, you got to say just get, get out of your own side, give yourself a little bit of space. On a third and 18, Burrow drops back, throws it quick to the right side. This is going to find his tight end, and he's brought down at the 17. So they did gain nine yards right there. Um, and that does give some space for the punt, but, you know, that's all that was designed for. So here we are coming back with it. Falcons on the move, first and 10. Hawkins up the middle. Finally gets brought down after a gain of about 12 yards. Hawkins took the handoff right up the middle. No one was in sight. And he picks up 12 yards all the way down to the uh, Bengal 32-yard line here as we continue this first drive of the second half. Now Jared is in the shotgun formation for wide. Runs a little bit of play action. Fires it. He's going to have Gage. Follows his blocker. Gage down to the 10-yard line. What a throw by Jared. He has got about 12 for 22 for 160 yards on the day and the touchdown. And that one was a big throw right there. Trying to kind of, you know, make something happen. Get that little bit of space. Maybe we can get that score and separate ourselves out. So first and 10 from the 10. We do come to the set. Offset eye formation. Davis in the backfield. Hands it off just over the left of the center. And he's brought down after a gain of about two, three yards. Mike Davis, 12 rushes, 64 yards on the afternoon. Not bad knowing there's still just under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. So second and seven. Jarrett's going to come to the line in a shotgun formation. Three wide receivers set. They're all kind of bunched in close. Jarrett has the snap. Scans over the field. Stands in the pocket. Fires it. That's almost intercepted. Whoo, Jarrett has two touchdowns on the day, and you do not want to spoil that with an interception, but he almost did on that one. So now we have third and seven here from the eight-yard line. Jared in the shotgun formation once again as he has a snap, scans over the field, fires it, and that's going to be caught by Pitts, but he's tackled pretty quickly there at the three, and he's not going to be able to get in on that. So fourth and three now from the three. So it's kind of interesting. you got to remember, we don't actually technically have to have a touchdown right now. We just need what would amount to three yards without a touchdown. But... You know, it is what it is. Two different ways that it can work for us, so we are going to go for it now. As Jared gets the snap, scans over the field, fires it. Kyle Pitts, touchdown Falcons! Touchdown Falcons! Oh, my goodness! Oh, baby, oh, baby. On a fourth and three, we call the pass play, and we find Kyle Davis up in over the middle. Linebackers couldn't stick with him on that drag pattern. Nobody could, and he's able to get free and get into the end zone. So now here we are a little bit later in the game, about five minutes ago in the fourth quarter, we have maintained a two-score lead at this point as it is 30-20. to 20. And the Bengals are trying to come back. Joe Burrow's thrown for 326 yards, a touchdown, one interception, and he's 30-35 passing. So he's had a pretty decent day, um, but they do still find themselves trailing us by 10. As our defense is out there on the field trying to make that big stop, something we could not ever do last game, when the Panthers put up 49 on us. This is our time right now. Make that happen. Burrow has the snap. We get the pressure up the middle. He drops it off to the right side. He's going to find Mixon, but he falls down out of bounds at the 33, and that's third and seven now. Mixon, 81 yards receiving on eight catches today. A great afternoon for him. And that seems to be the story with the Bengals. Individually, they seem to have good stats. Just as a team, just a poor score. So third and seven, Burrow alone in the backfield, has a snap, scans over, pressure comes, fires it to the left, and that's out of bounds. That's going to be out of bounds, incomplete, fourth and seven at the 33-yard line. The Bengals trailing by 10. They are, looks like they're going to send out their field goal kicker as he's going to try to get that one booted through to make it one score ball game. As they get that one up, and it looks like it is going to be good, and that would make it one score at that time. 
Um, so here we are coming down on the our ensuing drive with it. We're trying to run the clock down, obviously. Um, but they do have these timeouts that are kind of festering for us. So we need to be careful to make sure we actually get it over the line of no timeouts to prevent them from having a chance to get the ball back. Third and three. They use their first timeout, thankfully. So hopefully after this, they will have to use their second. So if we can get the first down, we should be good to go to end this ball game. Mike Davis is going to do it down the left sideline. Breaking tackles still in the fourth quarter. Mike Davis, big time run on that. Oh, the hole opened up and he went scrambling through it. And broke breaking tackles, stiff arming, spinning away, juking guys out. Overall, great afternoon for this Falcons offense. And that run would seal the deal for us as we would just kneel it out and take this victory um, on and even ourselves up for the season at 1-1. One and one. Great overall victory. The rushing game worked out. Caleb Jarrett didn't, I mean, had some stupid moments back there. Um, you know, but, hey, didn't throw an interception. Main, stood tall in the pocket. Made some good throws when they had to be there. And so you can't really ask for more from your rookie. So that's great to see. We are tied. Um, our record is even on the season 1-1. One and one. So it should be interesting to see how the rest of the season shapes out. Now we're going to go and do these little upgrade points here for Pitts and Jarrett. Um, and while we're doing that, it does remind me to let y'all know to go and hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed already. And if you did like today's video or you like the NFL in general, just why don't you go and give us a thumbs up as it really does help out the channel. And we greatly appreciate everything that y'all do for us here at Champ and Sons. Um, so with that in mind, we are going to advance on to the next two games of the season. Now, Jarrett, he's still a development trait factor hidden, um, so we'll have to see how that kind of works out. So in the next episode, we will take on the Seahawks. Um, they will be one of our games in the next episode. And let's see who else the Bucks. Yeah, Seahawks and Bucks. Next episode, everybody, I will check y'all out then. Um, as always, everybody stay safe. And, well, you guys know how it goes by now. Later, y'all.